Welcome everybody to Pinkies Up! If you are new here, we aim to answer questions that regular people like me have about wine. On this episode, we're answering the question, is American wine better than French wine? I don't know. Welcome to Pinkies Up, a series where we answer questions normal wine drinkers like Bridget have about wine. I'm Nick, and I'm here to answer these questions in a way that makes sense whether you drink your wine with your pinky up or you drink it in a solo cup. Let's see what's going on this month. Well, Bridget. <laughs> well. <laughs> today, we're going to do something that I get a lot of questions about. We have customers coming in all the time that want to know, should I buy French wine? Should I buy American wine? Especially a lot of people that I don't want to say are new wine drinkers, but have been drinking wine for a little bit, like wine, want to try some new things, or someone that has a more experienced wine drinker coming over mm. and it's like, you know, it always sounds like French wines. Chateau de Chambonneau. <laughs> are fancier. Are fancier. <laughs> and maybe that means they're better. Sure. They're usually more expensive. So should I be serving French wine instead of American wine? Well, today we are going to find out <laughs> what you think. So the methodology, I have four types of wine. Okay. Uh, that uh, an American bottle and a French bottle. We thought okay. about doing European, but, mm, eh. uh, but uh, we're, doing, we're recording around Fourth of July. Yep, so, so you know, <laughs> uh, I, we know the French people helped us out big time <laughs> in the Revolutionary War. We appreciate your sport. Thank you very Vive much. Vive la France. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys. Uh, but today we are Team USA. Yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see that. <laughs> Yay! Um, so we have sparkling wines. Okay, yum. We have Chardonnay. Okay. We have Pinot Noir, your favorite. Mm. <laughs> and then we have Merlot because I don't have any French Cabernet because it's very expensive generally or you? very bad. But the Merlot <laughs> is a different type of, you know, yep. so we'll yep. see. We'll see what you think. I'm excited about that. So quick break while I grab the first wines because what we're going to do ding, ding, ding. is pour in blind tasting okay. fashion and you have to pick which one you like. Should more. I like cover my eyes while you do this? Um, I'll just not it's look. It's in a table behind the camera that oh. you guys can't see. Okay, great. <laughs> but I can. BRB. Okay. <laughs> So we have the first two in your glasses. Uh, let's start with the one furthest away from us. They're such different colors and so many more bubbles. <laughs> ah, bubbly, refreshery. Yeah, this one has far more bubbles, at least, than my back one does. Ooh. God. Okay, sorry. The bubbles got me. <laughs> I love this. I love bubbles, though, if you're new here. What do you What do you think in flavor-wise? Hmm. I don't know. I think this is... The American one. I don't know. Well, you haven't <laughs> you even that. had the other one I yet. know, but that's why, oh, you just want me to describe the flavors? I'm like, listen to me. My gut says American. <laughs> it's got bubbles. Uh, I know nothing about the difference. between. That's uh, not true. You've taught me things, I'm sure. <laughs> Bridget, you're a bad student. Hmm. Okay. I have to compare them. Can I do that? Yeah. Am I allowed to taste the second one yet? You can. This one looks like a Chardonnay to me. Like, there are... Literally, if you're not watching on YouTube, I can see like a bubble. Am I am I hating on this before I try it? There's no bubbles to see here, Nick. <laughs> Yours looks bubblier though. Your back one. Oh, whoa. Okay, these taste vastly different. I do still prefer the first one, and there's far more carbonation. 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 <laughs> but, you know, in the second one, then it looks. So when you're looking at them, um, the first one much lighter in color. Looks like a lot more bubbles. Now, we're not in the proper champagne glass, so we know that makes a difference for the bubbles. <laughs> but the back one still has some effervescence, I would say. Like that. Try and spell that for I the like show it. notes. <laughs> um, darker color. More distinct flavor to me. Um, I don't know what the flavor is. Um, but I, it's not my, I prefer the one in the front. Well... Round one goes to America. Woo-woo! So the first one you tried I is mean... Scharfenberger Brut. <laughs> Scharfenberger. Scharfenberger <laughs> comes to us from California. Ooh, round one. It okay. is the Brut Excellence. It is a blend of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Oh, what? Which is a traditional champagne thing. Everybody knows champagne is the big place in France. Maybe originated sparkling wine. Uh, so this is a traditional mm. French method of making sparkling wine. The traditional French wine grapes. 
but it, but this is from this the is States. from California. Hmm. The second one that comes to us from France is Charles Armand Brut Blanc de Blancs, mm-hmm. and this is hmm. a Vin Mousseau, uh, all white grapes coming from the south of France. So not yeah. champagne. We wanted to try and pick some more like fifteen dollar wines that are readily accessible. A lot of times the French wines are going to be a little bit more expensive than the California wines okay. because of import taxes. Um, they have to come across an ocean to get here, so it adds <laughs> a little bit of expense. <laughs> wanted float. to kind of do uh, similar quality, but yeah. So, so this these one are about is the same price. A, the, actually, the French one's a little less expensive this oh. time. Uh, there's not really a lot of cheap American sparkling wine because of yeah. some things. But there is some more affordable French sparkling wine because of how they grow grapes in the south of France. What is this distinct flavor in the Blanc de Blanc? Like, do you, maybe that's just me. It tastes. Yeah, no, so... it's got. It's to me, it's got a little bit more of the like yellow peach and apricot notes to it. Mm, it's a little apricot. creamier type of thing. Yeah, it's. I was gonna say thicker, and that comes how, from how they do it. I like to describe my wine as thick. <laughs> it, it is, is thicker. Okay, a little bit more viscous. Oh, so <laughs> viscous is better. Some things to remember. Mm. Uh, it's a little bit harder with sparkling wine because of the bubbles. Just yeah. are a great evener, but in general, California has a warmer climate than France, which usually sure. is going to give more bold. Bigger red fruit flavors, while France is going to have a little more muted hmm. black fruit flavors. Okay. Oftentimes, you'll get a little bit more herbaceousness or tertiary earthy notes in French wines compared to California, where they might be a little bit more one note. And in California, it's more common to use American oak, where you get those vanilla things on the end, whereas France, they use French oak, <laughs> which doesn't have that vanilla note, just more of the dry tannin on the end. So as oh, you're trying to okay, guess, okay. those are some things that are generally differences between France and California. Some are mm. stylistic, some are historic, and some are climate-based. Are we are all of the American wines California? They're all California. Okay. I thought about pulling something for Oregon, but I said, nah. Nah. Um, nah. I'm taking notes to see if I can score here. They're all from... <laughs> a good guess. Actually, they're all from Sonoma, I think. Oh, all right. Yeah, I think they're all from Sonoma. Okay, this was a good one. So that was... One a, So America won Europe nil. Sorry. <laughs> On to round two, which is Chardonnay. Oh. Chardonnay time. <laughs> I lied. They're not all from Sonoma. The Chardonnay right. is actually has select yep. from Monterey County. This is one of the wines you will find everywhere and for good reason. It's a great wine. The Hess family makes incredible wines. Yep. This is actually the first bottle of wine I ever drank. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, you uh, remember that. I love it. Um, I have no idea what mine was. <laughs> and then the French one is Cave de Luni, which is a really nice Burgundian, Burgundial Chardonnay. Burgundial. From uh, is that like a proper phrase? Uh, Burgundy, Bar- Burgundy, <laughs> Burgundy, Burgundy. I wanted to say Burgundy in style because it comes from Burgundy, Burgundial. I don't know, but it's from the Macon, uh, which is the southern part of Burgundy. <clears throat> so Burgundy is okay. where Chardonnay originally comes from. Proper Burgundy is the stuff you've maybe heard of Montrachet that gets to be in the hundreds of dollars per bottle, hmm. pretty pretty fast, pretty because easily. There's not that many vines. There's or? not that much of it. Great. It's Look at me, I'm learning. Small little properties, and uh, people pay a lot of money for Interesting. it. Interesting. Do we carry any of that? I'm just curious. Any of the Montrachet? Yeah. No, but there's some over there. <laughs> there's some. Okay. So right off the bat, these look identical. They are. So yep. yeah, they look the same. So for this one, stylistically, they're both going for. Um, Kind of a balance with Chardonnay. There's very, very crisp, very clean stainless steel ones. And then there's very rich oak heavy ones, creamier ones. I went for kind of in the middle stylistically to level the playing field. So this first one smells more aromatic than the second. Just got that right away. I get a little bit of that green apple kind of I citrus see. thing. Oh, way creamier than I was ready for. Buttery. Touch of cream and butter on that Whoa. end. Whoa. That's, I feel like more than a touch. <laughs> I really expected by the way it smelled to be more um, refreshing, but you know, it got Sauvignon Blanc on my mind, maybe. <laughs> I don't generally drink Chardonnay, everybody. Wow, these are so vastly different from another, in my opinion. Um, when I really thought this was going to be, I still have no idea. Well, I'm going to guess. I think I do know which is from where, but I don't know which one I like better. Um, I don't generally. 
I don't I don't love a creamy wine. <laughs> I thought I used to, but this one's a lot. It is a lot. Mm. I feel like the buttery one is the French one. You would be incorrect. Dang it. <laughs> the Hess shows no. a little bit of that American style of they have a little bit more French oak type of influence on it. So it gives it that butteriness, that rich or American oak. oak that gives it more of that American buttery you know richness on the end. If I would have looked at my notes. I would have guessed right. But I didn't even look at my notes. <laughs> okay. I will say as the second and third sip, it's much less shocking. Um, to me, <laughs> I'm, I'm just I got nothing to say. About You're that. making apologies for America now. I am. The second one, um, so the French one doesn't like as we drink these side by side. So I should say, it's unlikely you are drinking them side by side unless you're having a fun wine tasting event, which we always encourage after listening to these. Yeah. Um, Get together with your friends. Yeah. Open some bottles. Even better if you have some French friends, you could do a little. I don't know. I think it's fun. Um, <clears throat> but side by side, they the it makes the French one taste um, almost watery. Like it's good. It just tastes watery after Definitely. the first very and, rich one. And I think that's generally a stylistic thing you can find difference between America and France. Oh, is that the American wines generally do have those bigger, bolder flavors? Wow, a little bit more alcohol, more flavor. Richer flavors, while the French ones are a little bit more refined, a little lighter in flavor, a little lower in alcohol. Okay, so actually going into this, the reason I guessed that was the French one is because it, it felt more flavorful, and I just, I made the assumption that French wines were better. Just telling you. So which one are you picking as your favorite? Actually, I like the American one. I like the Hess better. Wow. I know. 2 nil to America. I know. I, know. I, I like it better. I just didn't guess correctly. <laughs> We'll head to Pinot Noir, oh, which Bridget's this is gonna all be time favorite the real, red grape. <laughs> the real test here. We're back. Hello. <laughs> Pinot Noir time, oh another boy. grape that is originally from Burgundy, France. This one is from Louis Latour, which is maybe the most easy to find bottle of French Pinot Noir in America, okay. Bourgogne Rouge. Uh, yes, that's how you pronounce it, Bourgogne. Oh, I was like, I'm looking at these bottles like I don't it looks know like Bourgogne. Like. Bourgogne. <laughs> but okay, it's uh, Bourgogne Rouge, right. <laughs> which is red Burgundy oh, wine. Okay. This is an entry level Burgundy wine, comes from a lot of places across the area, but very very quality level driven entry level nice wine. Uh, and then we have Calera Pinot Noir that is also from the central coast of California. Again, I thought they were all from Sonoma, but no, <laughs> I kidding. was wrong. Still from the same state, man. <laughs> uh, still central coast, like the has Chardonnay. So hmm. apples to apples, kind of, I guess. Okay. And this hmm. one is Calera's really well known American producer of Pinot Noir, about 20 to 25 bucks. Uh, the Latour is about 20 bucks too. Mm, okay. And just uh, this is a nice, nice American Pinot Noir. So, so get guessing. Get guessing. Oh, well, okay. One of them, the one in the back, so number two, looks slightly lighter. Um, you know, less. I don't know. Looks more peachy colored. This one looks more maroon. Okay, I'm looking at my notes. I'm making a guess right away from my original note that you told me. Different climates, okay. warmer climate, bigger, bolder flavors, I'm cooler taking, climate in Burgundy. Yes, but you know what note I'm taking? You said that definitely, or that the more dry and more tannin, <coughs> excuse me, is generally French wine. So I think number one is the French. You're correct. Woo, woo, look that at, I is was the taking Latour. <laughs> so very classic Burgundy. Um, you get a little bit more savory, earthy notes off of this. You get some more floral notes off of this. It's real dry. That I really enjoy. And it's very dry. Very dry. Do you generally like dry wines? Mm. Yeah. I could drink burgundy all day, every day. It's very dry. I think the choice here is obvious, of which is my favorite. <laughs> the king percent alcohol, is, too. So I could really drink it all day. That's low well, alcohol. The American one is 14.5. Obviously, which means it's probably higher. <laughs> everybody, the... <laughs> My choice is the American one. <laughs> so the Calera, yeah. I mean, what would you say about this so fruit-wise? The, um, sorry, I had to resip everybody. I'm really bad at um, nailing fruits in it until you tell me. Is there, yeah, to I me, mean, it's, like it's got blackberries, like yeah. very distinct blackberry, black currant, licorice. 
But the, you always say, I, rem, I know you say licorice, and that's like such a turnoff flavor to me, but I don't get that always. Hmm. But I get berries. Anise. Yeah. But, but anise to me is usually so strong and painful. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have picked it. I guess perhaps like now that I know it's there on the tail end, but it, to me, this just tastes like a nice... My issue with Pinot Noir, everybody, is that generally I feel like it's so light and it's just not my thing. This doesn't, I don't, I don't mind this. You know, it's a little, you know, you said $25 maybe. Maybe I'm buying the $12 bottles and I should be upping my price a little if I'm going for Pinot Noir. Also, cheap American Pinot Noir is usually Syrah, so. Okay, well, there you go. I guess I don't like Syrah. Yeah, I don't mind this one at all. Um, But the Burgundy, wait, so explain Burgundy Pinot Noir again. So Pinot Noir is a grape that comes from Burgundy in Europe in most places, the wine is labeled by area, and that area has a governing body that says the law is you could only use mm. these grapes. Mm. So in Burgundy, the primary red grape, there are some others you can use that nobody uses, is <laughs> Pinot Noir. Not advised. You can use Gamay. Um, that's more common in Beaujolais. Uh, there's some other things you can use. Chardonnay is the primary uh, white grape. You can use Pinot Meunier. That's primarily used in Champagne for things, but um, <laughs> it's complicated. Uh, so... When you say red burgundy, you you can pretty much assume it's Pinot Noir. Uh, in America, we just said you, you can just label what the grape is. Um, that's how okay. our minds work. Different. And yes. then you can put your county, your state, you can put American wine. And there's different regulations then about if you call it American wine, it can be from different vintages, different states, different grapes. If you say it's Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon, it has to be 80% Cabernet Sauvignon. And I think it's 90% from Napa Valley. So you can still get fruit from other areas that can either help change the flavor a little bit or reduce the cost a little bit. And you can use other grapes that can change the flavor, change the cost. And what's the, I'm sorry if no one cares about this, the governing body, governing body that like checks that, is that ATC? It is the TTB in America. TTB, what is that? Tobacco and... Alcohol, it's not alcohol, tobacco, firearms, ATF. Yeah, that's part of it. What's the T? What did I say? It's well, like, so while we're looking that up, I know that just seems interesting to me. Like, who's checking to make sure it's ninety percent? The Tax and Trade Bureau. That's Ooh, what it's called. Exciting. Okay, here, 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 here. Uh, off from their website. People may not care about this. <laughs> no, this is funny. What did it say? Oh my gosh, it says our oh. mission. So their mission is to collect federal taxes. Our mission is to take... How they have not been bombed yet, I don't understand. I don't advocate for violence. I'm for paying taxes because I like roads and schools and the military. But their Whoa. website literally says Whoa. our mission is to collect federal taxes. Google it. Um, Back to this wine, I have a quick note. If... If you're, because I'm bad at describing the berry flavors, um, if you're into like the finish of wines, I can understand because this this French Pinot Noir is distinct. It has a distinct finish it and does. mouthfeel where I feel like the American one is just an easy finish. And so it's yeah. just like, it's an easy drinking wine. It's, I don't mean to say nothing special. It's actually I quite, in, I like it. Um, it's just, um, it's an easy finish. It's, it's. Easy to drink. It's like a great dinner wine. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. That's all. I just had to make that note. <laughs> I think one of the things you see is you asked about difference between Burgundy and Pinot Noir. Yeah. It speaks to the Europeans think that you should, the wines should be of place. They call it terroir. And so they think Burgundy wine should taste like Burgundy wines. Oh. And so they want it to taste like the land, the soil. Sure. I and see they that. think it should be something of character. Whereas Americans, we say it's Pinot Noir. We can make Pinot Noir what we want. Oftentimes, oh. um, this is a gross generalization and a stereotype a little bit. But in America, we're seen as more of a winemaker-driven um, industry where the winemaker says, I make wines that are this. Mm. Maybe that's uh, someone like uh, John Williams, my friend, who owns Frog's Leap. And his vision is actually farm-focused where he dry farms. It's all organic. And he lets the wines kind of do their thing. Um, Or maybe you are, um, you know, John Truchard who does butter. And you you, you say, I make wines that have huge buttery flavor notes. Butter is a Truchard wine? Yeah, that's a funny story. It's (laughs) the family split a little bit. (laughs) What? It's a funny story for another day. Maybe oh when we get Anthony on, but okay. um, <laughs> that's a funny story. <laughs> um, but you know, he makes wines that are big, jammy, over the top flavors, and that's him putting him because he buys some good fruit. But that's him putting himself on the wine. 
Whereas in France, they're more of let the wine, the grapes yep. be what they are. and The land speak for itself. Yep. Yep. So I, I would generally agree that I think oftentimes um, French wines are a little bit more of a place and mm-hmm. have a little bit more character where American wines are just a little bit more yummy often that they're meant to be something to enjoy. Drinkable. That is a super great description of these. Like, I just think that's a, a super approachable way to explain exactly this, um, which is what we're trying to do on Pinky's Up. So like, yeah, this tastes like the earth, <laughs> but they do it out of respect. And I get that. I don't like it because I, of course, have been drinking American wine, I'm sure. <laughs> that is your my drink of the earth jam. right there. <laughs> One last great. thing to go. America is swept the series so far <laughs> three nil go america it's also... my country tis a fee <laughs> are we gonna sing i feel Sweet like we're gonna sing Liberty. all right let's be back with merlo <laughs> I can hear the flag. Do you hear that, everybody? That's our flag whipping in the wind. America <laughs> taking a three nil lead. Oh my god! Three gosh. nil lead. Three nil lead into the final period. This will be interesting. I couldn't tell you the last time I had uh, Merlot. Okay, so this is uh, we're comparing Bordeaux to Sonoma, hmm. and you've perhaps heard of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, <laughs> Cabernet Franc, Malbec, Petit Verdot, and Carmenere which are the oh. Bordeaux varietals. You've, you're probably aware of Bordeaux varietals. And it actually comes to a place in France called Bordeaux. Bordeaux has <laughs> historically did a lot of shysty things to take over the wine trade to England. It's a story for another day, however. <laughs> however. And they are the birthplace of Cabernet Franc and Merlot, mm. as well as Sauvignon Blanc. Cabernet Sauvignon is a hybrid love spring off child thing of <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet, <laughs> Sa- uh, Cabernet Franc. Yeah. I was like, is that right? That's why That's I love correct. it. Um, so anyway, so Cabernet Sauvignon and Bordeaux is extraordinarily expensive or extraordinarily not good, generally speaking, oh. because it's more expensive. People like Cabernet Sauvignon more, so they pay more for it. It's also a little bit more expensive to grow than Merlot. Um, hmm. The right bank, left bank of the Gironde River uh, grow different things. So we have a very nice about $20 Merlot from Chateau Tour de Honde uh, from hmm. France, from Bordeaux. Uh, Bordeaux Superior, but it's actually really a... Uh, any, anyway, it's, it's a little <laughs> bit better than that. Bordeaux Superior is usually kind of like a garbage appellation. Uh, but this is a little bit better. And then we have Sonoma. This one really is from Sonoma. We have Francis Ford Coppola's director cut, mm. uh, recently bought by DFE Wines. Congratulations, Delicato family. It's a nice purchase for y'all. Uh, <laughs> but this is their 2017 Merlot from Sonoma County. And I think Coppola makes some bomb wines. So this is the director's cut version. So a little bit nicer okay. version. So have at it, Bridget. Okay. I know Merlot's not your favorite. I know. So I just have smelled them right now. That's all I've done. And I have a guess in my mind. So you're going to have to trust me if I tell you I was right from the beginning. Okay. I have a guess already on which one I think is the American one. I won't lie to you. I promise. Most of the flavor compounds are in the aroma. I know. I'll be really impressed if I could do this. I'll be impressed too. Okay. I still hold true that I think number two is the American one. You're correct. Yay! Look what at you guys. Made you, what made you go that um, way? Well, the smell, it just smelled fruitier and bolder. Yep. Fuller. Uh, like it would have more flavor. I mean, quite frankly. And then once I tasted it, the first one um, was a bit drier. So that just solidified my choice. Wow, I'm so impressed with myself, you guys. I learned all this from Nick. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned like Bridget did. And... What I want to do to put a bow on this before I let you talk about All your right. feelings okay. is this was a bit of a setup. I knew Bridget would pick the American <laughs> wines. Well, I didn't. <laughs> because Bridget's palate really runs toward that big, bold, mm-hmm. juicy, jammy flavor. Thing. Yeah. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and saying your palate runs toward is like wine D-bag way of just saying this is what <laughs> this you like is, to drink. Yeah. Um, it's like a gatekeeper term. I don't know if I should say that, but <laughs> it's, you know, what we use in the industry. And my palate runs more towards a little bit more acidity, a little lower alcohol, and a little drier. I like mm. acidic sour foods. Like, oh yeah, I love sour food. I love these things that are Oof. dry. I like spice. And I like spice, man. I think that 
kind of reflects my wine preferences. I also like lower alcohol so I can drink more of it. Um, so <laughs> Not I this, me, though, this Nick. Was, this was a setup. Like, <laughs> okay. I knew you would pick these wines. I preferred the French ones in most of the cases. Okay. So we're going to say the American wines are better, I think. We're going to pick the we're winners, America. Say, that was we're, okay, for we'll no, wave this flag. America, but. F yeah, in the words of Team America. <laughs> but. It, but they're different. Yeah, they're just so different. Um, I think to me, I, I was not joking when I said I was taking notes, and that's what helped me through this. There's a couple very easy takeaways. French wine, earthier, drier, more tannin. American wines, more vanilla, oaky, bolder flavors. And that was that's it. That's your takeaway. <laughs> and that has to do with climate, which is warmer in America, has to do with winemaker personalities, and honestly, consumer preferences. We love yeah. us some Coca-Cola. So... <laughs> Our wine reflects that a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't anything wrong with that. Um, And it should be said also that climate change is great for Bordeaux and they're starting to get a little bit riper flavors. So we'll see. (laughs) We'll see. They used to have, you know, like two vintages and seven that were just so cold and rainy that didn't work. And now, now it's, um, climate change is working out great for them. (laughs) Thanks. Climate change. Way to go. Al Gore. (laughs) Does Bordeaux have you on your their payroll? <laughs> yeah, is that one of the big five? Okay, I hope you learned something. I hope you take these and taste them next to each other because it really is fascinating. It's a fun thing. It's a great... Uh, we recently had a themed party here. That love a was theme. That was a lot of fun. We, we love themes. If you have friends that enjoy wine, this is a great way to get together. Yep. Have ha- Tell one group of friends to bring... A French right. wine yep. of this right. and this, and you get right. an American wine of this and that, and taste, taste them against out. each other. Yeah, and see, you'll learn where your palate runs. Is that right? Yep. Where it runs towards? <laughs> what's, it, what's the term? <laughs> this was famously done in the Judgment of Paris, which is American wines against French wines, The Ameri- and this was in the 70s, uh, in 76, actually, I think. And um, you saw that in the movie Bottle Shock. America shocked the world when we said American <laughs> wine could stand up to French wine because everyone said, oh, pinkies up. We Here we are. are. But um, so you can recreate that. Maybe watch Bottle Shock while you're doing it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I just I hope everybody can can learn this because this is something I get a lot where people feel the need to buy French wine to impress people. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, it, I love French wine. I wish I could sell more French wine, but not everybody likes it. So I don't think get crazy like- about it. Here, the, quote, safer option would be an American wine. I think oh. that's what people are. <laughs> Faux shizzle, people are used my to bizzle. So if you are looking to have a themed wine party, um, do the French versus American, or go look up some of our past episodes of Pinkies Up. We have some fun tastings um, that you can have. You know, we'll plan all your social events coming up. Just theme them all on our Pinkies, uh, Pinkies Up events. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> we release every Sunday our main Dinner Plus drinks, where we talk a little bit of drinks, a little bit of food, <laughs> and a lot of fun. And then we also have, every Friday... A brand new segment called Amuse Bouche, where you get just a little bit of Bridget. It's a preview of what's coming up, or just something that's on my mind. It's a quick 10 to 15 minutes of Bridget every Friday. If you didn't watch this on YouTube, you can check it out on YouTube if you'd like to see our... <laughs> flag-waving. American <laughs> flag-waving. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram. And remember, hit that follow button, download us, keep us in your feed. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers.